Now, the subject of this video is pulse width modulation and the associated circuitry with what you see here. I'm not going to be too concerned about the microchip pick which reads this pot through its analog to digital converter and converts that information into a pulse width modulated signal that is sent through this optocoupler to this 12 volt control circuit and thus enabling me to control the intensity on a 12 volt LED light. We will um, look at the structure of a pulse width modulation waveform, how this opto isolator and power driver circuit up here works and what that means for you when it comes to motor control or controlling light intensity. Here is the wiring diagram to the PIC chip circuit that you saw in the video using a PIC 12F683. While that's not the subject of the video as such, I'll give you a brief overview. Here is the 10K pot that I adjust to control the duty cycle. The uh, PIC through its, one of its analog to digital converter channels will take a value, a 10-bit value, and use that 10-bit value for the pulse width modulation circuit to control the duty cycle coming out of um, GP pin GP2 which is sent through an optocoupler to a switching transistor we'll look at momentarily. We have two switches over here, SW1, SW2. One or uh, the other or both need to be active before I can have a pulse width modulation output. That's because this circuit was designed to drive a H-bridge uh, motor control and the pulse width modulation was designed to control the speed. Here is the uh, other side of the optocoupler. It consists simply of a 1000 ohm resistor and an NPN Darlington transistor. You could have used a regular transistor if you wanted to. And how this is connected is the plus side of the uh, circuit here goes to a 12 volt source. The negative side goes to the positive side of the 12 volt lamp you saw in the uh, video. How does this work? Basically the longer the on time versus off time the more power transfer we get through the uh, switching transistor as you can see in this illustration. Your average voltage rises as the duty cycle increases. This is often used in things like switching power supplies such as the LM2674. It usually has some kind of feedback loop that controls the pulse width modulation duty cycle if I need, if I'm drawing a lot of current and the voltage starts to drop, it will increase the duty cycle to increase the energy transfer and vice versa. Alright, what you're looking at here is the actual face to my oscilloscope and we're going to walk through the signal as I adjust the power from fully turned on to fully turned off. Let's note several important facets of a pulse width modulation signal as used for power switching or at least as I'm using it. The frequency in this case is 250 Hertz. I programmed that into the PIC chip. That stays constant. That does not change. Period is the reciprocal of frequency or 1 over F and at 250 Hertz that's 4 milliseconds. Now, if you notice here with an oscilloscope, we have blocks going vertical and horizontal. Horizontal axis, it's one millisecond per division. That is, from zero to one is one millisecond, one to two is one millisecond, and so forth, for a total of four milliseconds, which relates to the uh, period for a 250 hertz signal. The vertical block is 5 volts per division. That is, this here to here is 5 volts. 
the signal is actually going to run from about down here up to there. That's going to be around 10 volts. All right, I'm beginning to slowly cut the power back down. You can see as I walk through the frames. All right, I've stepped it down to where one of my, uh, or for one millisecond it's turned off, and for three milliseconds it's turned on. Well, what you're going to do is take your on time, in this case three milliseconds, and divide by the period, which is 4 milliseconds times 100, I have a 75% duty cycle. All right, I have two divisions on, two divisions off. So it's 2 milliseconds divided by 4 milliseconds times 100. That's a 50% duty cycle. Let's keep turning it down. All right one division on, that's one millisecond, divided by four milliseconds times 100, that's a 25 percent duty cycle. At this point the um, LED lamp is barely on. It's still on a little bit but it's dim. And if we keep going on down, either I've got just a little spike coming through, the lamp is completely turned off at this point. All right, there will be a second video following this immediately, and I thank you for watching the video. Here's what an oscilloscope will show you what is really going on when you're dealing with pulse width modulation. This is off the uh, PIC chip operating the 12-volt uh, light, and you notice, if you can see the light off to the side, there it's totally bright, and there it gets dim. Let's look at what we actually have here to understand what we're doing. When you're doing pulse width modulation, you have what is known as period. Period is the reciprocal of frequency. That is, if I was to count the uh, squares here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, eight squares if you can see if you should be able to see them at 0.5 milliseconds that means my um, pulse width at 100 percent of my pulse width is when you get down to it it's about four milliseconds if you take the reciprocal of four milliseconds my frequency is 250 hertz when you're um, adjusting the duty cycle, that's the time on from here to here, that's your total um, pulse width divided into the uh, time that it is turned on times 100, that's your percent or your duty cycle. Right now, this is adjusted to be approximately 50% duty cycle. It's two, per, it's, two percent, it's two squares on, two squares off. Four squares total, well, um, four, two divided by four is going to give you 0 0.5. 0 0.5 times 100 is 50. And you can vary, and this, this is the time that, you're, that it is on versus off. The lamp just went off or I can go fully on. The uh, oscilloscope incidentally is connected across the TIP120 uh, TI op operating as a solid state relay or switch through an optocoupler. This was part, part of a video from a previous deal on the uh, microchip pick. But the frequency never changes, only the duty cycle. And that's how I control my power output. This is far better than trying to use uh, resistors to drop power if you can get by it. Um, this works particularly well in resistive loads. 
Uh, it really, and it will work to control. Uh, you can also use it in many DC loads. What I utilize this for is to control the speed of a motor. Or in the case, uh, let me move the video just a bit and zoom it out. In the case of this, you're actually seeing the waveform that is operating this. And there you go. And that is an 8 pin pick chip. One dollar. The program to do all this plus cut it on and off. Oh, I don't know, 150 bytes. It's programmed in assembly. I'm going to have a bit of stuff on assembly. Uh, it's not worth trying to program these little chips in C or something. And you can learn a lot off sim assembly. But anyway, that's an introduction to Pulse Width Modulation. Thanks for watching.